To our God, we bow at this time, O oh Lord. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, O oh God, for the things that you've done in our lives. We come before you, God, at this time with hearts filled with gratitude because you've been so good to us, God. You've watched over us and you've kept us and sustained us, and protected us to this very point in time. And we know it's because of your, your care, because of your own grace and mercy not because of anything that we've done or anything that we deserve, but just because you're good. So God, we just pause right now. We just thank you. It's our prayer, God, that during this moment that we have together, that we will lift you up. And we will honor you. That our hearts and minds might be open to receive what it is that you desire to share with us. Bless us in this time and bless us in this space for your honor and your glory. God, we thank you for the angel of this house and we ask God that you would continue to continue to bless him, continue to allow your favor to rest upon him as he leads us in doing the work that you've called us to do. Bless this time, bless this moment once again, and we'll give you the glory, God. We'll give you the honor, we'll give you the praise, for you are worthy. We love you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Lift your voices and say, Here I am to worship. Say it. Here I am to worship. Yes, sir. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, say that, that you're my, my God. You're all. You're all yes, you are. Just say, say, I'll never know how much it costs yeah, yeah. to see my sin upon the cross. I'll never know how much it costs to sins upon Come on, say I'll never know Say I'll never know Just how much He calls See my Say you are my strength, oh, yeah. 
strength like no other strength strength like no other Some voices this morning saying the fullness in the fullness of your in the power of your name. Yeah, yes, in the power of oh Lord, you lift us up. Yeah, oh, you lift me up. It was over, say you, you made a way, yeah. And we're standing here only because you made a way, you, yeah, made a way. When our backs were against the wall, hey, and it looked. We're standing here Only because Come on, if you know he made a way Come on, say Say you, you made a way When our backs were against the wall
cause you made us to say you made a way, made Say it again, say you made a way, say it. Made a way. Come on, acknowledge that this morning. Tell the Lord that God made a way when it looked like there was no way. God made a way, and we serve the God, kind of God who can make a way out of no way. Come on, let's give Him glory this morning. Cause you made a way, say you. You made a way. Give God some praise. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to prepare our hearts to receive a word this morning, but and we're thankful to God for the man of God, for yeah. our pastor, for the angel of this house. We thank God for him. And uh, we're going to just continue praising God because God made a way. Yeah, yeah. God is our strength. Yeah. God has given us all that we need and all that beyond what we can even imagine. God has put it in place. And because God has done all of those things, now I don't know what you're waiting on and what you're praying about and what you're praying for. But because God has already done so much, we need to go ahead and give him the glory. We need. Oh, OK. We, uh, now, come on, light of the world. Y'all know. <laughs> God deserves the glory. God deserves the praise. So let's lift them up this morning as we prepare to receive a word. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Say all of the glory. All the glory belongs to you. Oh, all the glory belongs to you. Oh, God. Oh, God. And we give God the glory. Glory, all the glory belongs. Oh, 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 God. Oh, and we say, Ha, say, Ha, Ya, say, Ha, Ya, say,
Shabaka, cause you're worthy, cause you're worthy, you're so worthy. feet as we prepare to receive God's word this morning. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. We honor you. Hallelujah. Because all the glory, all the glory We give God the praise. Hey, oh God. We give God the glory. All the glory belongs. All the glory. Oh, oh, oh God. And the church said, Amen. He has bowed, eyes are closed. Dear gracious God, thank you so much for waking us up this morning out of a dying bed. And we thank you that we didn't use our toothbrush as our hairbrush to comb our hair. But you woke us up in our right mind. You gave us the strength not only wake up, but to get up. You put strength in our tired feet to put one foot in front of the other. To come into your house of prayer to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, please do remind each and every one of us that the glory does indeed belong to you. We can't handle it, so you keep it. Hide we your servants behind the cross so that Jesus and only Jesus can be seen. And we pray and trust that as we leave this place today that men and women, boys and girls, those who are in this sacred space and those who are watching online will leave here talking about none other than Jesus Christ. Thank you for allowing us to see another year to be sure it'll be another year of ups and downs. But we believe that uh, that we will receive blessings from on high. Forgive us of our sins, catch them into the sea of forgiveness and remember them no more. Now bless your manservant who stands behind this sacred desk. Bless my mouth, my mind, and this message. And if you will bless the effort this morning, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. This we ask in the mighty name of him who loved us enough to die for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. Let's give God one more hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. For the Lamb, if you have a copy of God's word and feel so disposed, uh, turn with me to the book of Psalms, the very first one, the very first psalm, which is the theme for the rest of the Psalms, Psalm 1, Psalm 1, and, and let me 
just say this as you're turning there that this is this was supposed to be my New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day uh, sermon that I get, did not get a chance to preach because I was at home sick. So I just I said I'm just gonna wait till next year, just save it. But uh, tomorrow is not promised to us, is it? So I just thought I'd better go ahead and get it in. Yeah, go ahead and get it in. Only God knows. Uh, verse 1, you'll find these words. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but they are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You may be seated in the presence of God. I wanna talk to you on, just for a little while on the subject, blessed. Blessed, just one word, blessed started to entitle it How to Be Blessed. It could even be called How to Stay Blessed. But I just thought I'd just make it simple. Just call it Bless. Before I get into it, I would like for you to, well, let me just, I'll just do that after I preach. Let me do that later. Bless. Verse 1 says, and um, I'm going to take my time, okay? So, uh, cowboy is not playing today, so we just, we just, we, we got to make some changes. And so. Back in the 90s, we, the cowboys were blessed, you know. I don't care how rich you are, you can be a multi-billionaire. That don't mean you know how to run in your lane. Some people just need to run in their lane, let the players play, the coaches coach, and the owners own. But when the owners want to coach and manage and throw the quarter, throw the ball and catch it and dance in the end zone, we have disappointing outcomes. <sighs> Blessed is the man. Watch this. The word blessed is one of two words translated and written in English the same way. Um, the first one is Barak, and y'all know I love that word. Typically when I eulogize somebody, I say something about this word, Barak. It sounds like a former president. I just can't get out of this, this off this first note I got here. Barack, don't, don't we miss him? Mm, I didn't know how much I would miss him. And, mm. Well, Barack, that's, that's this, the word here for 
one of the words for bless. Bless the Lord. And whenever you see that word, Barak, it is a word whose focus is on the granting of favor. It is the granting of favor by God. So when the Bible says God bless someone, it is saying that God has granted someone favor. When the Bible says that someone was blood blessed, it, it means that they have received favor from God. But the emphasis on that word for blessed is God who is the blesser. Are y'all with me? So the word Barak means that God has granted favor. God has blessed us when God grants us favor. And I am blessed when I realize and recognize that I have received God's favor. But that's not the word here. <laughs> this is another word in Psalm 1 verse 1 for bless. And this word more accurately would come into our culture by the word happy. The Bible says, not blessed is the man. But in the Hebrew tongue, in the original language, it actually says it could be transliterated, happy is the man. Now, you're going to learn that when God says or talks about us being happy, it's never in a vacuum because this happiness is directly related to our relationship with God. Very important. But the emphasis is on us and not on God. Y'all, y'all missed it. Help me, Holy Spirit. I'll give it to you again. The first word, Barak, is when God grants us favor and the emphasis is on him. So God blesses me, God has granted me favor. But this word, a shay, the second word for bless, which is found in verse one of our text, is a word that means happiness. And it is my response to the blessing or the favor of God. So instead of the emphasis being on what God has done to make me happy, this word for bless means and includes the idea that I have done something to position myself to be made happy. I said it too fast. The first word, which is not the word here, means that God granted me favor, and I look like God has granted me favor. So when you say to someone, they look blessed, it means this, you look like God has favored you. And incidentally, when you have been blessed, you ought to look like you have been blessed. I wish I had a camera shooting that way so y'all could see each other. You ought to look like you've been blessed. There ought to be a difference in the way that you look, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you worship. It ought to make a difference in what kind of attitude that you have. When you've really been blessed by God, your life ought to become an advertisement for the favor of God. And God ought to be able to tell the devil at any given time, you see that one right over there? That one right over there, when that one's blessed. God ought to be able to point to you and let your life be an example and a model and a paradigm of his favor that has um, rested upon your life. But now, that's not the word used here. The word in verse one more accurately means happy, and I preached a sermon before many years ago called Happy, 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 and I won't preach that, but I, I might say something about it uh, because it, it's gonna help me make my point, but I won't focus on it, I'll just mention it, happy. So 
It says in Psalm 1, verse 1, happy is the man. The word here means, and this is almost, you, you missed this point. I, I failed at you this morning. This word happy means to be straight. It means to be right. And it means to be well ordered. What does it mean, brother? Seems to be happy in this context. To be happy in this context means my life is straight. It suggests an orderlessness about my life. It means, here it is, that my life is right with God. And I am happy when my life is right with God. It means that, as young people say, I'm straight with God. Yeah, yeah. See, so you can't, you ain't gonna even feel me this morning unless you're right with God. It's both positional and emotional. So there's some shouting in the sermon, but it's at the end. To be happy, I want, I want you to really get this in your spirit because I'm trying to help you and I want to help myself. Let me just, a commercial, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I don't preach for, man, for fame and fortune. Dr. Washington used to tell me, son, if you're going to make money uh, one day, you ain't going to do it preaching. You say, get you something else to do to make some money. Ain't no money preaching in the church of Christ. It's about soul saving. And I want every one of you to go to heaven. That's my prayer every day, that every person that God has given me to serve makes it in. And so my sermons are to help you make it in. And I want to make it in too. So y'all pray that I make it in. But my whole op modus operandi is to make sure every member and every leader in this church makes it in. And so I'm talking about stuff that will help you make it in. To be happy refers to a position and an emotion. Now, by positional, I mean my life is right with God relative. My life is right relative to my relationship with God. Y'all got me? I am happy when my life is in an ordered position by God. Okay, this Bible country, we down south. Let me give you a Bible. Psalm 37, verse 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by God. In other words, the steps of a good man are navigated by God. The steps of a good man, the steps of a good woman are laid out by God. The steps of a good man are plotted out by God. Now, once I realize that my life and my steps have been ordered by God, there is a settled peace that comes over my life that is an emotional response to the reality that God has granted me favor. Yes, but the emphasis now is on how do I respond, and I respond by being happy. Are y'all with me? Go back to the text again, blessed is the man. Start right there. Here's the catch with the word bless. It is a very interesting word because, listen, and this is what I preached last time, it's in the plural. The word says blessed is the man, watch this, the word is plural, not singular, so it is not just blessed, it is blessedness is. It's, 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 it's bad English, but it's good theology. Here's a man's life that is characterized by happiness is. Now, happiness is, is better translated, oh, how happy. <laughs> the word is called a plural of intensity. You can't diagram that English teachers, but it means multiplied happinesses. 
As a matter of fact, one version says it like this, and I've already preached it. Happy, happy, happy is the man. A plural of intensity it suggests that no matter what's happening around you, the power of the living God not only gives you the power to rise above obstacles, but it gives you the ability to have happiness way down on the inside. That is inexplicable. Now, that doesn't even fit into the grammatical mode that God has the ability to place you in a place where your happiness and your blessings overflow even grammatically. It doesn't even make sense for you to be that happy. And now, and, and, and you know, you'll get to the point if you keep walking with God, and you old people know that, that, that you'll be going through some stuff and you'll face some hard times and you'll have to face some obstacles and some ups and downs and folk will be looking at you and, and they will be actually thinking that you have lost your ever-loving mind because they know how much hell you've been through. And they're looking at you wondering, why he's so happy? God has the ability to place you in a place where your happiness and your blessings overflow. I wish I had a little help. Every time people see you, you have a smile on your face. You have pep in your step. Uh, you have your head held up and your shoulders thrown back and you're happy doesn't even make sense for you to be that happy and, 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 and what they don't really know is that you being happy has nothing to do with what they can see I said your happiness has nothing to do with what's going on on the outside. In fact, your happiness has little to do with what's happening because happening has a, happenings have a tendency to change depending on what has happened. But when you have some happiness that is way down on the inside, underneath the skin, no matter what the wind does, it doesn't matter what the weather forecast is, the, the storms can come but happy says the storm is passing over. Let the wind blow. But happy says he can speak to the winds and tell the winds peace. Be still. Let the storms uh, rage. But happy says he can hold the rain and stop the storms and put calm in your life. And you can be happy, happy, happy. Watch it now. Happy is the man. The Bible says here's a person who has the spiritual ability to be straight with God and he can be straight with God even in hard times. It is a true happiness based on their relationship with God. But this happiness, and here's a, a switch, a little thing you got to get. This happiness is not automatic. That's deep. That's deep. I don't got too deep. The text says this. Here, here it is. Let me, let me show it to you in the text. The text says the person who is happy is a person who is happy because they do certain things. And they don't do certain things. So that the person in this text who is happy is a person who has made a choice. So happiness is a choice. Watch this. Verse 1, blessed is the man. Got that? Verse 4, but the ungodly are not so. Here we go. In verse 1, in verse 2, verse 3, the person in verse 1 chooses to do some things and chooses to do other things. And because of the choices that they have made, they qualify for happiness. Verse 4, but the ungodly are not so. Brothers and sisters, this psalm is a contrast of two lifestyles. In verse 1, 2, and 3, there's a lifestyle that has made certain choices. 
In verses 4, 5, and 6, there is a contrast of another lifestyle that has made different choices. And in verse 1, it says that the person who made the choices in verses 2 and 3 are happy, but verse 4 says the ungodly are not so. Happiness is a choice. So you can choose to be happy and you can choose to be sad. I'm not talking about what people do to you because you cannot always control what people do to you. You can control two things. Uh, number one, you can often control how long you let them do what they're doing to you. And then number two, you can control how you respond to what they are doing to you. So it doesn't matter what circumstances you are in. It doesn't matter how hard the times get. The truth of the matter is that you have the ability to choose how you respond to them. And the way you respond to them will have a bearing on the path that your life takes after the cataclysmic occurrence has come up in your life. In other words, you have a choice to live your life this way or you have a choice to live your life that way. And you can't blame your mama them. You can't keep blaming your daddy for not being there. You can't keep saying, uh, talking about the man. You can't keep talking about the system. Uh, uh, and, and God knows you can't keep blaming the leadership. But you must realize that you have a choice. And sometimes you have a choice to be happy. And if you don't get anything else out of what I'm saying today, you've got to make up in your mind that I'm going to choose to be happy. God desires for me to be happy. Now, I'm not talking about some superficial emotionalism. I'm talking about happiness that's underneath the skin, that is inextricably woven within the constitution of the fabric of your relationship with God. I'm talking about a relationship with God that is able to withstand no matter what the world throws at you. God is not moved, nor is God impressed by what you're going through. He was God before you went through what you went through, and he'll be God after you pass through what you've gone through. He says, I'll be God and do my part, but you have to do your part. And sometimes your part is that today I'm going to make a choice and I choose today in spite of what I've been through. I choose today in spite of what has happened to me. And sometimes you got to just wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and tell the person in the mirror, today is a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will what? Rejoice and be what? Glad in it. You've got to tell yourself uh, or anybody else who needs to know, I'm not going to cry anymore. I've cried my last tear. I'm going to rejoice today. I'm going to be happy. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to bellyache. I'm not going to feel sorry for this, uh, myself. Today, I'm going to put my trust in the power of the living God, and I'm going to be happy today. Yes, I'm going to be happy if I got to be happy happy all by myself. In fact, today, I ain't looking for no unhappy folk. I'm looking for some happy folk. I ain't hanging around nobody today who's got a long face. I don't want no complaining, no more drama, no more sophisticated complaints. Today, I'm going to be happy. Now, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but I know today is the day that the Lord has made, so I'm going to be happy, happy, and if you ain't happy, you got to learn how to be happy. You got to act happy. Fake it till you make it so you can take it. You got to raise your hands like you're happy. Praise God like you're happy. Look the devil in the eye and tell him, I'm happy. This is going to be a happy new year. He thought he had you. But I got some happy way down on the inside. Why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadows roll? Why should heartbreak be lonely? And long for heaven and home. When Jesus, oh God.
When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. I may be a little off tune when I sing, but I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. I'm happy in Jesus. I'm happy with Jesus alone. I'm happy. Dry your eyes, child of God. Be encouraged, my friend. God says your tomorrow is better than your yesterday, and what is coming is better than what has been. They may steal your money. They may steal your car. They may steal your house, but don't let nobody steal your joy. Now, wherever you fall on that continuum, God says you can be happy. I got the clothes. I'm tired. I'm tired, but let me, I'm still sick, but I wanted to come and tell you something. Let, let me, I need, a, I need some help. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the hemologist to the pulpit and let the hemologist finish for me. Can you finish for me, hemologist? Tell light of the world what you, what you told me to write in the study. The hemologist says this, I had some good days. I had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And I've had some lonely nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all my good days outweigh my bad things. And I won't complain. Why is that? Because God has been good to me more than you in this world could ever be. So I'll just say thank you, Lord, and I won't complain. What else do you have to say? Sometimes my clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. And I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me more than my weary eyes could ever see. So I just say thank you, Lord. And I won't complain. I'm going to be happy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. I'm going to be happy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You got to make a testimony. You got to call those things that are not as though they already are. God is not moved by hard times. He want to see you blessed. He want to see you praise him. He want to see you lift up your hands. How many of you are happy? How many of you are glad that you know God in the pardoning of your sins? How many of you are glad that you walked in here under your own strength? How many of you are glad that he put shoes on your feet and clothes on your back? How many of you are happy, happy, happy? How many of you can praise God because he's been good to you? How many of you are happy because he helped you pay your bills and raise your children? How many of you are happy because he gave you a mind to think and a heart to feel and a church and a family to love you you ought to stand to your feet and be happy, happy, happy happy, happy 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 that's all I got for you stand to your feet still sitting, stand to your feet God has blessed us He's done a great and marvelous things in our lives. He's blessed us. But the point of the psalm is that we've got to bless God. I hear people singing, getting excited, God bless America. Yeah, God has blessed America. When is America going to bless God? God has blessed us. He woke you up this morning, woke me up this morning. He gave us some health. He gave us a little strength. What else do you want God to do? You have to do the rest. But you can't take shortcuts to be successful. You have to do it God's way and not your way. Trust God, never doubt him. Don't give up on God. Don't throw in the towel. Don't hold up the white flag of surrender. Don't jump off some bridge. Don't put some bullet in your head. Don't take some overdose of pills. Trust God. 
He knows what you stand in need of. He knows what you are going through. He knows that you, some of you have fallen on hard times. Some of you are dealing with depression. Some of you are dealing with financial problems. Some of you are dealing with health problems. Some of you are dealing with emotional problems. God knows you. He knows all about you. He made you. And the devil is in your ear telling you, but God taking too long. I've been faithful. I've been doing this, that. I've been doing everything the preacher been asking me to do. I've been doing everything I know to do in this Bible. I've been doing my best. I've been taking, I'm making sacrifices. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Lord, I'm tired. I got to, I got to do something for myself. I got, but you're going to destroy yourself. Do you realize how many temptations I have every day to go left? But when I look at this Bible and I look at you, I got to get, stay together. Get my, if I'm not together, I got to get myself together. And once I get myself together, I have to make up in my mind, I'm going to stay together. Because I'm responsible for the souls of people. And I can't, I can't take chances. I can't even be around people that don't love God. I can't even stand to hear nonsense. I can't even stand to hear nonsense people talking about the church and talking about God and talking about the people of God and they ain't right and they ain't this and they ain't that. Let me tell you something. We got, hey, hey man, I would come to the church but there's too many hypocrites in there. Listen, we can stand one more. We all have sin. Everybody in here is a sinner. There's only two differences. One saved by grace and one that is not saved. But we all sinners saved by grace. We all need God. And I'm asking you, I'm begging with you, I'm pleading with you, don't give up on God. And I'm not talking about those of you, you, you are here, you, I, I, you here. I'm, so I'm not fussing at you and I'm not even fussing at the people who are watching who are not here, because some of them are not here because they can't be here. Some of them traveling, some of them sick, some of them, uh, you know, working, some of them have issues. But for those of you, for those that can be here and that are not here, I'm here to tell you that (laughs) you can't really be straight with God unless you in the house of God. Now you telling me that you follow Jesus and you a follower of Jesus, God sent his son from heaven, receiving the praises of angels to come down here through 40 and two generations to receive the curses of men, be beaten almost to death, carried across through the Villa Della Rosa, fall under the weight of the cross, go on up Calvary's hill, nailed to a cross, had his Clothes stripped off him. He's standing there in front of his mama naked. I know y'all see that rag around him on those. Uh, he ain't had no rag around him. Nailed his hands and his feet to set your hands free to clap. Took nails in his ankles so you can run around the church and praise his God died and was buried in a borrowed tomb, stayed dead three days, rose on the third day, stayed 40 more days, taken up into glory, 10 days later, sent the Holy Spirit. One day he's coming back for his bride and you telling me you ain't got to go to the church that he established? He, went, he did all of that to establish the church and you don't have to go to it? That's deep. Oh, that guy, you, know, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian? No, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian, but you're a Christ, if you're a Christian, you'll go to church. I ain't, your car don't have to be a car. Don't have to go to the gas station to be a car. But if it's going to keep on running, it better find a gas station. 
I got an electric car. It's better find a plug. And church is your plug. Church is your gas station. You got to come in here and get fueled up to face the devil. Some of y'all running low on gas. Need to stop by 748 Southampton Road and get fueled up. So you can run on to see what the end would be. I'm not really not fussing. I'm begging you. I'm pleading, which I really need to be in my bed right now, but I had to get up and tell you. Had to get up and tell you. Keep living for God, okay? Give God a hand clap of praise. If you're, not here, if you're here and you're not a child of God, this is what you need to do. Have faith in his son. Be willing to repent of your sins. Confess him before this audience as being the Christ, the son of the living God. Have all your sins washed away. Go through an operation, and that operation is baptism, which is your spiritual circumcision. What he does is he, he will remove everything in your life that's wrong. All the sins you've committed, he'll wash them away. They'll be gone. They'll be covered in the blood. Okay? Then what he does is he say, well, that person can't make it by himself or herself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a family. So I'm going to add them to a congregation, which is God's local family, so you'll have a support system. See, a lot of people fall away from the churches because they get baptized, but they stop coming, and you need to be in a family. See, you don't have a baby at the hospital and leave the baby in the crib, do you? You got to take that baby home. You got to feed that baby. You got to take care of that baby. You got to change that baby pampers. You got to bathe that baby. You got to get that baby whatever that baby needs, some milk, some whatever food. You got to teach that baby how to walk, how to talk, how to live, how to blah, blah, blah. Now, if you won't leave a baby by himself, why would you leave a newborn Christian by him or herself? You understand what I'm saying? So you need, you need that. That's where you get your food. That's where you get your... And then when you become a member and you come to church, join a ministry. Because then now you're using your gifts, your graces. You're learning the people. They're learning you. You get stronger and stronger. And whatever the church is not, you get in here and make it what it ought to be. This is how I got baptized. I was at Southwestern, Marcus Welch said, I was saying, he said, man, you ought to get baptized. I said, why? He said, so you could be saved. I said, y'all don't act saved. Y'all do what I do. Y'all going to the same places I'm going to. Y'all after the same girls I'm after. And then this is what he said. He said, why don't you get in the church and show us how to act? And that's what I've been doing for the last 40 years. I done messed up. But I try to see what I hit. Get in here. Come on and get in here and show us how we ought to behave. And if you in here behave because people are watching you. And if you're here and you just gotten weak, you've taken a step or two back. Come on, return to God. We all have sinned. We all messed up. But we love you so much. We're going to pray for you. God's going to forgive you. We're going to prop you up. We're going to pat you up. We're going to encourage you. We're going to get in the huddle and fire you up. Yeah. We're not going to give up on you. Don't you give up on us. We're going to sing, and we want you to come. Why don't you come as we sing the song of encouragement? You could be seated, but if you need to come, you can come. I know some of you are tired. Some of you are tired. You remember when we first organized Light of the World, we stood up most of the service. But we got to sit down now, don't we? 99, but we was all over the place. We could, you couldn't sit us down. But that was 25 years ago. We done had some surgeries and some car wrecks and... We didn't slipped and fallen and 
We can't do what we used to do. I see some of y'all got canes. Y'all didn't have them 25 years ago. Brother Webb, I need to borrow that when you get through with it there. <laughs> come on, Brother Fuel. Come on, y'all. Come on, sing. Y'all come if you need to come. Come on. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was when he was when Jesus was he washed my sins away. Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! Watch when he was when Jesus was he washed my sins away. Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! family um, on yesterday sister Mary Hopkins uh, funeralized and buried her cousin in San Antonio Texas I think it was in New Bromsfield Texas and then uh, brother Eddie Hopkins uh, funeralized uh, his uh, nephew uh, celebrated the home going of his nephew uh, we ask that you also I don't see him uh, pray for brother George Davis uh, he passed through surgery. He's recovering at home. Also, one of our deacons, Brother Curtis Holland, is still uh, in recovery and rehabbing. And uh, keep keep him keep him before God. He's recovering at home now. And uh, and I see his wife, his precious wife, is here, Carol. We'll be praying for the entire family. Uh, Brother Webb is here. I'm glad to see you, Brother Webb. Um, uh, he goes through it uh, every day of his life now, but uh, he's strong and he loves God. And uh, he walked in here with his precious wife un under his own strength, and so we're happy. Give God some love for that. It's a blessing. I'm sorry to announce that one of our members, Brother Cleveland, had a stroke. I think he's, at this point, stable. I'm not sure if the stroke was paralyzing. Uh, so continue to pray, pray for him. Um, 
also pray for Ken Isabel. He's uh, at home. He's recovering from food poisoning, and we'll be praying that uh, he's able to return to us soon. Robert May is traveling, and uh, please don't forget our senior saints. Among them are Sister uh, Mayor, uh, Sister Allen. Is this Allen here? She's not here. She's watching online. And Sister Essie Johnson, who who's not able to be here, she's She's uh, at home, not uh, convalescing at home, so keep her before God in prayer. She loves this church. She's a faithful, faithful member for the entire existence of this church, and she still supports this church, loves this church, and sends her tithes in. So even at her age, she knows uh, that uh, the, the Bible says we have to remain faithful unto death if we want to receive that crown of life. We have uh, several precious souls that have responded to the Savior's invitation. Did y'all give me the card? Did y'all give me the cards? Oh, you you can do the prayer. Do you do the prayer, uh, Brother Felder? Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Brother Webb has this card. Praise report. All scans clear. No evidence yeah. of disease. Yeah. 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 He says, uh, "Thank you for your prayers." Because prayers work. That's a beautiful card. Thank you, Brother Webb. Uh, we have a card from Sister Tiff Tiffany Heath. Uh, she says, thank you for your continuous favor. Thank you to everyone who called, text, and prayed for me while I was in the hospital. I also need prayer for my family. Please pray we uh, continue to uh, lead and, and love our family. Please pray for my daughter. She will be coming home in March. Pray for my kids in general. The devil was has been busy. Amen. I'm always happy despite. Uh, thank you for the sermon today. You're quite welcome. A card from Sister Margaret Sheffield. Uh, I will be having a medical test on Tuesday. Uh, pray for, for favorable results. Continue to pray for my family. We will be happy to do just that have a card here from David Morris. He confesses his sins, asks for the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous. I'm asking for prayers for some health challenges. Also pray for me as I will be having a procedure on this coming Friday, January the 26th. Pray all is well with the outcome and we'll be happy to, to do that. Uh, and then uh, finally we have a card from uh, uh, Sister Morris, she solicits the prayers of the church. I'm asking for prayers for uh, Sister Johnny Bashir and Brother and Sister Stocks. Uh, the weather is affecting their health. Uh, praying they will feel better soon. These are all of the cards that I need. Uh, Brother Felder, do you need these cards or are you going to just, do you need them? Okay. Let's first let's give uh, God a hand clap of praise for that sermon. For our minister, our visionary, our pastor, Dr. Seamster. Uh, I believe that was a necessary word that we all needed on this morning. Uh, let's go to God in prayer at this time. Oh Lord, our Lord, to the God who's the healer and provider of his people. Lord, we thank you for this morning, this opportunity to come and worship you. Lord, we just thank you that even despite the weather, Lord, you've allowed us to be here. And, and come and worship you, Lord, in spirit and truth, Lord. We ask that you be with those, our members who were not able to make it on this morning due to the weather, affecting their health, be with them. Lord, we ask that you uh, put your arms around them, Lord, and to give them a speedy recovery. We ask that you be with those who, uh, who have responded to the invitation, Lord, those who uh, are going through tests, Lord, those who are traveling. Lord, we ask that you be with them, Lord. We ask that you uh, guide them. Uh, navigate their their uh, their paths, Lord, uh, and we ask that those who are in the hospital that you be with the physicians and the nurses, Lord, that are assessing the situation, that you give them the ability, Lord, and the desire and the bedside manner, Lord, to be with them and 
and do everything they can, Lord. Allow them to do what they need to do. And you, but ultimately, we know you are the one who has the final say. And we know that it will be a favorable outcome, Lord. We ask that that as we continue to go through this service, Lord, that you be with our minds, our hearts, Lord. That we still keep our minds, hearts uh, directed and receptive to you, Lord. Allow us to position ourselves, Lord, to be blessed, to be happy, Lord. And to understand that the happiness comes from you, but only that we put in the work, Lord, that we can get the blessing and the happiness that you have in store for us, Lord. We ask that you continue to be with our uh, our minister, uh, our leader, Lord, Dr. Seamster, be with his health, be with him as he keeps uh, preaching and teaching, Lord. Allow us to be receptive and to follow him, Lord, and ultimately follow you, Lord. Again, be with those who responded, Lord. Be with our members, be with this church, be with the leadership, Lord. God us, keep us, protect us. And now allow us to never leave your sight, Lord. Allow us to not be negligent to what you're doing, Lord, what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do for the future, Lord. These prayers we ask in your son, Jesus, who died for us. Amen. You may return to your seats knowing that our God not only hears, but he answers all of our prayers. Day, oh, happy, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Amen. Let's give God one more hand clap of praise. Thank you so much. I, I have a couple of uh, uh, announcements. Um, Brother Butler, are you doing the visitors? Why don't you go ahead and do that? Let me. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful way to start your week off with a happy day. Excellent service, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'm before you uh, to do the most wonderful thing we like doing here. We like to welcome our visitors. If you are visiting with us this morning, if you would give us an opportunity to greet you, if you would do us the honor of standing just for a brief moment so we can get a good look at you. Amen. <laughs> On behalf of our pastor, Dr. E.D. Seamster, the leadership at this church, as well and most importantly, the membership, we wanna welcome you to service this morning. We know that you had many options of where you could have gone this morning. You could have thrown a rock and hit a mega church in any direction, but you chose to worship with us this morning, and we are so forever grateful. We want you to know that we absolutely believe that you're not here by accident, but by divine providence. So we hope that you heard something, felt something, and found something that you can take with you and share with others. And we hope that you come back and visit with us again. For those of you who are listening online, we, we love and respect you. We hope that you get an opportunity to come and visit with us. If you've not found a church home, remember the light is big enough to take care of every, your every need and small enough not to forget any detail. So at this time, we want to welcome our visitors with a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Brother Butler. I appreciate that very much. Um, uh, next, next Sunday, I apologize, next Sunday, we will be having a fellowship in the chapel, and if this chapel is not large enough, we will go to the fellowship hall, and we're going to have a little celebration. We're going to have a little finger food, a little cake for everyone who was born during the month of January. So we just want to wish all of you January babies happy birthday to all of you. And uh, we love you very much, and we want to celebrate with you on next. Following uh, subsequent months, it'll be every third Sunday and not uh, fourth. I think this is third Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, because I'm, I'm kind of out of balance a little bit. So uh, subsequent months, it'll be every third Sunday instead of fourth. But this uh, month, it would be on fourth Sunday, so we want to just uh, celebrate with you and let you know how much you love, we love you. Um, also, I want to thank all of you who sent me cards and texts and flowers and, and some, some, a couple of people sent me some money and I, I, I don't really need a lot, but I'm going to spend it and I sure appreciate it. And uh, I, uh, I bought myself a, my own birthday gift because I wasn't sure y'all were going to do nothing for me. So I, I just got myself a, a birthday gift. It's outside if y'all want to see it. And next year is my 60th birthday. So I'm going to, uh, I know I don't look like it, but I'm going to buy myself some again. 
whether y'all do or not. So y'all don't let me get all the blessings by being good to the pastor. And y'all don't be good to the pastor. So uh, I got Bible for that if y'all want it. Uh, I, I won't give it to you right now. The other, the, the other thing is I'm going to this year start keeping office hours. I'll be here uh, two days a week at the church. Uh, we are going to have secretarial support and staff here at the church. Um, so you can call into the office. You'll be able to talk to a person. If you need to see me, you can make an appointment with the staff in the office. Uh, I need to do a better job of staying in touch with you and finding out what's happening with you. And so uh, I want to thank you guys because on the 17th of this month was my seventh year as president of Southwestern Christian College. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, it, and it's been a privilege, and I thank God he uh, chose me for that assignment. It's been rough, but I, I've loved every second of it, every minute of it. I don't have one regret. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would do it again because I know how important yeah. Southwestern Christian College is and Christian education is. And we're living in a world where people um, almost despise God. And we need to equip young people uh, and have them in an environment where they can learn about God. And they can be safe in their humanity and their aesthetics, their beauty, and their uh, intelligence is taken for granted and they don't have to prove it every day at some of these other institutions. And I'm not saying every institution is like that, but there are too many of them that are like that. And how do you know? Because they are getting rid of uh, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it's almost like they are running on that. And uh, the second thing I want to say is that while I love Southwestern, I'm able to do what I've done at Southwestern because of this church. And I have to spend more time with this church so I can, con if I'm going to continue to help that school, I have to make sure this congregation is strong. And I can't do that on the telephone. I got to be here for you. So I'm going to do better. Thank you for your support. I'm going to, uh, we're going to, we got a lot of programs and ministries that are getting ready to start. Uh, we're going to start feeding people every weekend. I think that's been uh, the person who's responsible for getting that done. Just do this if, if it's ready to happen. We're we, we ready. It's just up to us, right? Just, just do it. Right, okay. So we're we getting ready to start feeding people every week. We're going to decide whether or not we're going to do a pantry so if people need to food or clothes during the week. We're going to make ourselves available to do that. We are looking to uh, get some grants or something so we can provide professional counseling for those of us who are still recovering from COVID. Still, some of us are still in a in a in a in a, in a daze sort of. We've been through an existential whirlwind with COVID. It's still out there because I just had it. And it took me out for three weeks, and I'm still having migraines. I'm still weak. I'm still having some, I'm not uh, clairvoyant all the time. And uh, so, but, so don't ask me for no money, because it's no, because I can't think clearly right now. <laughs> I'm not making any major decisions. That, that lead that to the board and the deacons. They can handle it till I'm, I'm straight. And, uh, but I'm, 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 I'm grateful I'm still here. So uh, keep wearing your mask and uh, I'm gonna leave it to the church whether or not y'all gonna wear y'all's, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it to the leadership, but I'm gonna wear mine because this stuff, I don't want anybody to get that. It's just, it'll knock you off your feet. So um, I wanna stay alive if I can. Now, the final thing is, and this is not pushing you in a certain direction, but this is so important. We got to vote. Now vote for anybody you want to vote for, but I'm telling you. Now 
I know people say every election is an important election, and it is. But in my lifetime, there's not one more important than this one. And as far as I'm concerned, I know you, we got experts in here that know way more than I do, and I really mean that, and I respect them. But if we don't vote, we're going to be in trouble. Now, y'all can sit up and make fun of some of these older people who are trying to hold it down in public office and talking about they not, they be making mistakes when they speak and they can't hardly walk. It's not if they can walk, it's whether or not they heart right. And we need to vote. We need to register if we haven't. We need to pay attention to what the issues are. Put down some of them video games turn off housewives for at least a couple of weeks and catch up on what's happen, happening politically. Now what's going on in the Middle East and what's going on over there in Russia with the Ukrainians, that stuff is going to eventually show up on the homeland. And it's going to affect us because if they are terrorists over there, they are coming over here and I'm not making a political statement about the border and the crossing of the border, but they're getting through through the south border and the north border. And some of them are, are, are coming into this country and they are sleepers already here. And we need to vote and we need to make sure that we are faithful to our civic responsibility and obligation and we can't talk about what's wrong with our government and our society and we sit it out. Because even when you decide not to vote, you vote. See, that's the decision. That's, that's, you're making a political decision not to. So whether you vote for the wrong person or the right person or somebody that you don't like, you got to vote. And if the other people you don't like what they thinking and saying on TV, you do your research. You smart, you intelligent. Do your research and find out what the issues are and make an intelligent decision. And nobody paying me to do this. I don't, I don't have anybody's, you know, I ain't on no stream. And ain't, nobody has their hand up my back. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm telling you. Now, I can lead a country. And I'm planning on buying something out of the country. So when the election day hit, I might be on a plane and we're going to be doing church on Zoom. So please, please, please vote. Now, I'm going to turn the service over to more spiritual people. We're going to commune, okay? So I'm going to turn the service over to the very capable hands of the spiritual part of our leadership. Love you guys. Amen. Praise God. Y'all take care. While we wait for the spiritual part of our leadership to come forward, we will, <laughs> no, we're going to commune at this time. Um, and so uh, we're going to lift a song and help us to uh, remember our Lord and Savior and his sacrifice for us. I have found a love that pardons. I have found some stripes that heal. I have found strength for my weakness and grace to cover all my sins.
in Jesus. All in Jesus. It's in Jesus. He is one. The rock of a firm foundation. blessed us um, in so many ways as we uh, as we've heard this morning that we are blessed we are most definitely blessed and uh, the least that we can do is uh, tell God thank you show God our appreciation um, for what God has done and is doing in our lives by giving back to him and so uh, as we often state that this is an opportunity for us uh, it is an opportunity to give because we know the Bible says that it's blessed, more blessed to give than to receive. And so we want to give you that opportunity uh, to give back to God what God has blessed 
uh, you with. And so you can do that in a, in a number of ways. You can, you can give online. That option is available. Um, you can text the word tithes to the church's phone number, which is 469-567-8200. And uh, you'll be prompted with some prompts that um, will walk you through the giving process that way. Or we have uh, collection boxes, um, one here, and there's one outside of this door as well. And if you desire to give that way, you can as well. But uh, let's be faithful. Let's continue to be faithful stewards over what God has given us. And let's continue supporting the work that God has so graciously blessed us with. So if you would, please bow with us. We're going to pray uh, for the offering. God, we thank you for being the kind of God who gave first to us. You gave us life. And not only did you give us life, but you also gave your son. And God, you gave both of those um, without us asking, without us even deserving. But because you are good, you first gave to us. Help us, oh God, to return back to you uh, that which you've given to us. As we say thank you, as we honor your goodness, as we acknowledge your majesty in our lives, Father, help us to be willing to give um, not just of our resources, not just of our treasures, but our talents, our time. For you deserve it all, God. And we thank you for all that you have done for us. Continue to bless us, Father, and we ask that light of the world might continue to be a beacon of light, of hope, and help to this surrounding community and to the world at large. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to prepare to dismiss. Uh, we do want to ask everyone, if you would, um, to exit out of this um, out of this entrance here on the east side. Uh, there was some ice on uh, this exit, and so we want everyone to be safe and stay clear of that. Uh, so, if you can exit out of uh, out of this door to my left and to your right, out of that side of the building, that would be absolutely great. We can ensure that you stay safe on your way out because that is what we desire. Amen? Amen. Um, there is nothing else. We're going to close out in a word of prayer and then, and then we'll be dismissed. So let's bow. Father God, we thank you again. We honor you, God. Bless us as we prepare to leave this place. Thank you for your word that came forth today. Thank you for your manservant that that received your word to share with us, Father, we ask that you would continue to cover him, continue to keep him, continue to provide him with recovery, mercies, and grace, Father God. And then we ask that you would bless us as we prepare to leave this place, that we might be ready to engage in ministry, to touch a life, to, to do a kind deed, to speak a kind word to someone and point them to you, for you're worthy, and we thank you for all that you've done. Bless us so that we can leave and be a blessing. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be dismissed.